what's up everybody it's good karma i want to thank you so much for joining us on today listen we're starting week three in our series uh thief of everything and it's all about comparison yes you've heard it the big word comparison many times we look up to people and it's okay to look up to people but when we start to measure ourselves we say hey they have this and i only have that they have that and i only have this then we start to downplay who God really created us to be. We start to downplay the things that God put in us to be a blessing to the world. I want you to see yourself as God sees you. See yourself the way he created you to be. Why? Because your uniqueness, your difference, the thing that makes you stand out even in the crowd is the very thing that God gave you to bless the world. So cut out the comparison, cut it out, stop it today, it stops today. Let's be who God created you and I to be, all right? So stay tuned, our ministry partner is coming up. God bless you. What's up, everybody? We're in the last week of our series on comparison called The Thief of Everything. We've been talking all about the ways we can get caught up in it and what we can do to break free from comparison. As we kick off today, I want you to think for a second about this question. Who is somebody you look up to right now? Or maybe you used to look up to them when you were younger. Maybe an athlete, an actor, a musician, a dancer, a designer, a YouTuber, a writer, comedian, podcaster, inventor, somebody. The list can go on for days, but who is someone that you admire for what they do? You watch them doing what they do best and you think, yo, that is awesome and I would love to be doing the same thing one day. It reminds me of a guy that I knew in, in kind of the same situation and his name is Clay. So a couple years back, uh, I, I was quitting one job and I was about to start another job and, and it was contract work, which if you don't know what it means, just trust me, it's weird. So I was singing at different churches and there's this worship leader and his name was Clay, Clayton. That's his government name. Don't tell him I told you, but Clay. And he was just like the pinnacle of a worship leader. I mean, this guy made his own music on the side. I've always wanted to write music. I don't even know how to like play a, a chord, but he would write this incredible music on the side. He wrote worship music. He was not only just a great singer, but he was an incredible worshiper and leader. Like this guy had it all. And every time I would sit in the congregation and watch him lead worship, or I would lead with him, I would just be like, this guy, right? Like this guy had it going. And then I would leave and I would maybe lead somewhere else or I'd watch back clips of me doing the same thing. And I'd be like, yo, I don't have it. Like, like I, I can't do what Clay is doing. I try to write music. I'd write like two lines in a notebook and just scribble it out, rip out the paper and just like burn it. Right. Cause it was nowhere near what this guy was doing. I admired him so much. See, we all know what it's like to, to, idolize someone so much that we want to be just like them, right? The problem is that eventually we realize that our lives aren't the same, and not even a little bit. In other words, we can't compare. In this series, we've been talking a lot about comparing ourselves with other people. And oftentimes, this is what we do with the people we look up to. We compare our lives to theirs. I mean, it's what I did with Clay. Now, let me clearly state, there's definitely nothing wrong with looking up to someone, being inspired by them, or even hoping to be like them. This is why we put you with incredible small group leaders each week. It's a great thing to have people you can look up to who can motivate you to make positive changes, live a more full life, and draw closer to God. That's an incredible gift. But the problem comes when the comparison shows up when we make the switch from looking up to them to thinking that in order for us to be enough, we have to achieve what they've achieved, do what they've done or become like they are. And the reality is that kind of comparison will always leave us feeling like we're not enough. The more we look at them, the worse we feel about us. I mean, that's what happened with Clay and I, and it's why I always felt disappointed after I had spent time with him. I was comparing my life to his. Every day, you and I see people that we could look up to, upperclassmen, older siblings, the girl on your team, the guy in your class, even peers and friends can fit within this category, and that is fine. On your own, you feel okay about who you are and the way your life looks, but as soon as you compare a part of your life to a part of theirs, you suddenly feel like you're not enough. You're not cool enough. You're not smart enough. You're not 
attractive enough, you're not talented enough, not rich enough, not funny enough, not popular enough, not good enough. We're so caught up in comparison with them that it changes the way we see us and it's not changed for the good. It becomes the thief of self-esteem, self-worth, and confidence. And what's worse is that it doesn't seem to end. As soon as we start to feel like we're smart enough, we'll look around and think we're not popular enough. As soon as we think we're popular enough, we'll start to think we aren't attractive enough. Somehow, it'll just never be enough. If that sounds exhausting, it's because it is. <laughs> it's the thief of everything, and it's not how you and I need to be living our lives. There's gotta be a better way, right? The question is, how do we break out of this cycle of never feeling like we're enough? To help us with this, we're gonna look at something that a guy named Paul, a leader in the church, wrote to other Christians thousands of years ago. The people he wrote to in this particular letter were dealing with the temptation to compare themselves to people around them, especially people who didn't have faith like they did. This was a case of Christians comparing themselves to non-Christians, but what Paul says can apply to all different types of comparison. Paul says this, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul told them right away not to copy the people around them. And he could have stopped there, right? He could have said, hey, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. And that's it. It was definitely something they needed to hear, and that sentence alone was a good reminder for them to quit worrying so much about the people around them. But Paul did not stop there. And I think the reason why is because he knew this isn't easy. It's like telling a kid, hey, don't eat too much candy. <laughs> that's difficult. Comparing is something that we all struggle with. And I think that's why Paul took it an important step deeper. He said, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Paul's not just talking about a good thing to do, stop copying and comparing to others. He's talking about a new way of thinking. He's talking about a transformation, a major change. A change into what? A whole new person. And it all starts by allowing God to change the way we think. See, Paul put a tiny bit of focus on them. He said, don't copy or compare. He put a lot of focus on you. He said, let God transform you. It's a shift in focus to go from comparing yourself to them to allowing God to transform you. When you and I start to understand what God says about us and how he sees us, it has the potential to change everything. When old thinking is replaced by new thinking, it takes our focus off of someone else's life and moves it toward who God created us to be. We can choose to live with this mindset every day by being intentional about the things we think about, thanking God for the good things in our lives. This is how we break the cycle of comparison and never thinking we're enough. This is how we lock up the thief of everything. But I want you to think about a few key words that Paul uses in between talking about them and talking about you. First, but let God transform you. This means you decide to let God. You proactively determine to move in a different direction. Think of it this way. Choose to see yourself the way God does. Hold on, I've got something to hopefully help us understand this a little bit better. All right, ready? This is what it's like when we choose to compare ourselves to others. We focus on their talents, their money, their looks, their popularity, their grades, their humor. However, when we choose to see ourselves the way God does, it's different. We focus on <laughs> God's love for us, the worth God assigns to us, how valuable God says we are, God's purpose for our lives, the gifts and talents God has given us. This is a much more valuable place to focus and you can carry it with you at all times. A few verses later, Paul says this, so, since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. Paul is basically saying, 
Let's just go ahead and be who we were made to be. We are made by God and we are loved by God. We were formed and created with specific gifts and traits that make us more than enough. The more we can focus on that, the more it will change our thinking and eventually change us. Believing this truth has the potential to help you break free from comparison and put the thief in lockdown. It also has the power to help you change your thinking into believing that you are enough. Let's start by trying two things. First, identify what's not true. In order to really change your thinking and start believing what is true about you, you've gotta first identify what's not. Ask yourself, what areas of my life leave me feeling like I'm not enough? Look for the places in your life that lead you to compare. Also, think about some of the negative things you think about yourself on a regular basis. Things like, I'm not attractive or popular or smart enough. And the second thing we can do is replace old thoughts with new ones. Identify the negative thought and then come up with something positive to replace it. Maybe something like, I I'm a great friend or I'm generous or I'm really good at playing the guitar. You can also replace your thoughts with truths about who God says you are. You can literally say things like, God says I am loved. I am a child of the King. God considers me a friend. I am important to God. God made me with incredible gifts. The Spirit of God lives in me. Whatever it is, pick something that celebrates who you are and who God made you to be. Let those new, true thoughts help you break free from the cycle of comparison. This may not be easy at first. Ask God to help you. You may have to find a place where you can write down these truths and say them out loud over and over and over and over, and I mean over and over again, and one day they will sink in. Over time, I think you'll begin to see God open your eyes to more amazing things about who you are and how God created you. You'll begin to see that to God, you're enough. And listen, isn't this a much more freeing and less just exhausting way to live? Imagine if instead of living with a thief, you could start living in freedom. Choose to see yourself the way God sees you. Because listen, God sees you with so much more worth, value, and incredible love. Hey, listen, I wanna thank you so much for following along with us in this series, Thief of Everything, We're talking about comparison. Hopefully something was said that would encourage your heart. I also want to encourage you, if you have not, to follow along at the Bible reading I'm playing. Look for the uh, Thief of Everything Bible reading plan. It is going to help you. Because sometimes uh, it's, it's challenging with so much peer pressure and the influences that we have around us to accept who we are, to embrace who God created us to be. I, I get it. It's, it's, it's so many things coming at you at one time. But here's the good news. Stay in God's word, um, build your, your life with him so that you can see uh, yourself the way God sees you. Then I think your perception will change on how you even view your life, period. Um, and so you will begin to embrace everything that is uniquely you because your uniqueness, once again, is God's gift to you to bless the world. I wanna have a word of prayer with you and then we're gonna be out. So bow your heads wherever you're at. Lord God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to share in your word. I thank you, God, for our young people, God. I pray, God, that they will see themselves as you see them, God. Transform their hearts and their minds to think like you think. Uh, transform their hearts, God, to see things the way that you see them, God. I thank you, God, that they have a heart to grow in your word, Lord, so that when they're reading your word, it becomes real to them. It becomes life to them, God. And I thank you, God, that as it becomes real and life to them, God, they begin to apply it to their lives, Lord. And in turn, God, they can see what you've already said that they are, God. And so I thank you, God, and we honor you. We give your name all glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, listen, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with us on today. We'll be right here next week, same station, same channel. Love you. God bless you.